Optimal health is a journey taken one step, one habit, and one day at a time. Dr. Wayne S. Anderson. Empowerment in education. Two powerful elements that will help you break free of convention and transform your passion for wellness to a level beyond the status quo. The Essential Oil Revolution, where you're given the tools to supersede an ordinary everyday lifestyle. Inspiring speakers, DIY recipes, healthy living tips, and more. You'll discover it all here. So tune in and get ready for a wellness revolution. For show notes and more, go to revolutionoils.com slash podcast. What's up, revolutionaries? Samantha Lee right here. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Essential Oil Revolution. Dude, today's show is so much fun. I've got the producer, director, maker of this new film. I don't know if you've heard of it. Ancient Secrets of Essential Oils. It's a documentary film all about the history of essential oils and also the modern day uses. Such an amazing film. Rich Prater is the creator, and we're going to hear from him behind the scenes what it was like to make the film and his favorite moments. And we'll even have some sound bites in there for you to get a glimpse of the film itself. It's really cool. We dive into ancient Egyptians, biblical times, modern day times, chemistry, and more. You're going to really enjoy it. So before we get to the show, let's pull a recipe out of our DIY dugout. It's been a while. This episode comes from Maria, who is a music teacher in Spring City, Tennessee. And to help her wake up in the morning, she puts in her diffuser her morning wake-up blend, which is three drops of stress away and two drops of peppermint first thing in the morning. Then when she comes home, she's got to wind down from all the teaching, all the kids. So she puts in her diffuser her favorite evening break blend, which is three drops of stress away and three drops of lavender. Thanks, Maria, for these diffuser blends. They sound dreamy. Hope you enjoy, everyone. And always love to hear your favorite recipes. Email us at revolutionoilspodcast at gmail.com. Tell us where you're from, who you are, and what's your favorite recipe. Now on to the show. Well, hi, Rich. Welcome to the show, to the Essential Oil Revolution. I can't wait to talk to you more about your film, Ancient Secrets of Essential Oils. Welcome. How are you doing tonight? I'm good, Sam. Thanks for having me. Well, we're so happy to have you here. I just finished watching the film and I'll just say it is amazing. There was like, I was taking notes furiously and I was like, this person's got to watch and this person's got to watch. You just, you did a really, really great job. You really covered like the quantum physics, the chemistry, the controversy, the historical context, the biblical context. You just covered it all in such a short amount of time. So congrats on that. Really great. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. So I want to know what inspired you to make the film? Oh, good question. Well, you know, a few years ago, I actually had a client that sold essential oils and she asked me to come on and help her with some of her marketing. And to be quite honest, as soon as I began working on it, it was just like another, you know, like another paycheck that I could just mark off. Mm-hmm. And, and as we began to like look at some of the oils, I honestly, I thought they were snake oils. I thought this is, you know, it's MLM, it's this and that. I just had a really negative perspective towards it. But as, you know, but after a few months, I started to use the oils when I would go over to her office. And then the more marketing research I had to do, the more I realized some of the amazing things were, you know, that were behind the oils because I, I just, I, I just looked at the face value of them. But then when I started to look at the actual science of the oils and then the actual history of the oils, I mean, it was pretty amazing. And then, you know, cause I had grown up, you know, just like everyone else hearing about frankincense and myrrh at Christmas time, having no clue what they were. I mean, I mean, I, I could barely stay awake in church, let alone try to figure out, you know, what was going on with some of the details and the, and the old stories. And so when I found out about the frankincense and myrrh and how it was just, it was more than just a Bible story. It was like actual practical uses that people would utilize in, you know, pre-biblical times in the Middle East, you know, all throughout civilizations that they used all these different elements from trees and plants and herbs and spices and, and how, you know, these were the medicines of the time. And so I just thought it was so fascinating. And then I began to do more research you know, on a personal level and just realized the amount of impact that these oils 
we're having in people's lives. And then it just kind of went on from there. And for me personally, it was always, I always loved learning by watching. And so being able to, there's all these online, you know, Netflix and Amazon, you can just watch things at a moment's notice and loved watching documentaries. And I thought this would be a great topic for a documentary. And that's kind of how we just pulled the trigger. And then we just went from there. And so it was kind of a whirlwind for about two years as we were traveling around and getting interviews and editing and finding out all these amazing things about these oils. Wow, I love that. So from skeptic to believer to filmmaker about essential oils. (laughs) (laughs) Right, exactly. Yeah, Love it. So I'd love to hear just a little bit about kind of the process of how you made the film. Like how long did it take? What kind of locations did you get to go to? And what kind of people did you get to talk to? Oh, sure. Well, you know, we were real fortunate to be able to stay in the United States. We had planned on going over to France and to Saudi Arabia and getting some footage over there. But we were real fortunate to have a lot of the experts. They were traveling inside the United States at the time. And so we would just call them up and they were gracious enough to give us like an hour of their time. And we would, you know, we would fly at a moment's notice over to like Atlanta or North Dakota or Houston, you know, Missouri, you know, places like that. And it was not real super exotic locations, but just the journey is always super fun being able to just hop on an airplane at a moment's notice and fly somewhere. And one of the interesting ones was Dr. Bala. He's out of North Dakota University and he'd written this paper, which we had found just going through the internet, like trying to find some kind of legitimate research that wasn't pointed towards a, a particular company or, you know, like, or, or they had some kind of, uh, you know, plan to u- like use it some way. We, we wanted to like to find an objective research article that we can actually use with lots of references. And we found there was uh, Dr. Ganesh had written this, you know, it was a 110 page article on essential oils and he was not associated with a company. He was just doing research. He was from India and he just loved oils and just wanted to find out more about them. And then some of the stuff was just amazing when, when we talked to him and and just a really good guy. And just, it, it was amazing how important these oils have been impacting civilizations all throughout history. I mean, it's really phenomenal. Yeah. And speaking of, I love the part about the ancient Egyptians and just how they would use the oils every day. And, and what was it about the way they would put it on their heads and it would melt down? What was that about? Right, right. Yeah. They would soak wax or beeswax in myrrh and they would put it on top of the heads. And so, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the ancient hi- hieroglyphs or pictures of these ladies wearing these big cones on their heads and they're walking around. You can look online for them. But I mean, yeah, th- those were wax, wax soaked in myrrh. And then as the day went on, the wax would melt and it would cover their bodies with the myrrh, which would act as a sunscreen and also an insect repellent. And so they were using these essential oils you know, how many thousands of years ago. And and that was an everyday life. And I mean, that's what that's what people use back then. I mean, that was a staple of everything that they did. God, it's so fascinating. And I loved how they would distill the oils too. Do you want to share that story real quick? Oh, sure. Yeah. They would get alligator fat and lie it on some like, you know, like some rocks or concrete, uh, like in a way where, you know, where everything would drain. And then they would put the flowers, the lavender whichever ones they were distilling at the time, they would put it on top of the fat. And as the sun heated up, the fat boiled, which distilled the oils out of the plants. And then they would drip off to the side and into some vases. And then they would take the vases and they would separate the oils and the fat in, into separate containers. And that, and you know that's how they got their perfumes and their oils and what they used in everyday life. And it's, it's pretty fascinating how they, the ingenuity to be able to, to distill an oil like that is just is really amazing. Yeah, I think we take for granted today how just how well I'm putting in quotation marks here, how easy it is now to distill essential oils because it really is is not an easy process. But compared to, I suppose, back in the ancient Egyptian times, we we have it pretty easy. I mean, that also makes me think about the part in the film where they're talking about the worth that these essential oils used to have, you know, like in biblical days. And what was it that uh, it was Dr. Josh Axe was talking about how much a, a bottle of essential oil was worth back then something like ten thousand dollars for a bottle of you know in today's standards they had guesstimated it was about 300 rubles or yeah i think it was 300 rubles whatever that was you know for that jar of of perfume that they had and then it was like one day of work was worth one like one of those rubles i think i can't remember what the actual they were really just in any time period these essential oils and resins and and herbs and spices have been, you know, just they, they've been invaluable 
to people every day, like in, in whatever civilization they were in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you have so much practical advice also coming out of the film as well. It really gives you practical ways to use the oils, but then also sort of the science and the why behind it, which I thought was really great. Do you mind? I would love to play this clip when Dr. Oliver Vinker or Dr. Ali, as he calls himself, was talking about peppermint and using it for athletes. So yeah. I'll go ahead and play that clip just for people to get a taste of the film. I use oils to improve athletic performance or exercise performance. So I use that with professionals, with athletes, but as well with people like me that just want to improve the exercise. When you take peppermint and you, you, you rub it on your muscles and you inhale it, ah, you're getting more air. Well, the reason for that is you, you're opening your small airways in your lungs. So therefore you're getting more oxygen and the oxygen will go into your blood and now you have more oxygen delivery to your muscles. So that will lead to a longer muscle contraction before you reach what we call a lactic threshold. The lactic threshold is when you don't have enough oxygen and you can produce energy with your muscles, the muscle will start using a pathway that does not use oxygen. We call this anaerobic pathway and it will create lactic acid. So when you build up a lot of lactic acid in your muscle, then the muscle will quit working. So how easy it is just to use a little bit of peppermint and the lactic threshold goes up. And so I use this for my workout. I use this with athletes. I use peppermint. I use other oils. I use oils that already prevent the soreness of the muscle when I'm done with the workout. I can work out better. I can work out longer. You take one drop of peppermint in a glass of water just before you work out. Your grip strength will increase by 34%. Your vertical jumping will increase 7% and your long jumping just out of your standing will increase 6%. Why is that? Because you just got more oxygen in your muscle. So I use peppermint, not just rub it on my muscle and inhale it, I also put one or two drops in my drink. And so I increase my workout performance. So yeah, so we, Doc Ollie was just, I mean, he's been involved with researching essential oils the past four to five years. And some of the science, you know, that he found was, you know, like was, was, was really amazing being able to use peppermint on your, on your, on your muscles and you, you being able to increase your vertical jump by a few percentages and you being able to lift more weight. And it, it's amazing. How, I love how he honed it down to numbers. It's like, like if you use this oil in this certain way, you know, you're going to help your body be able to do this and, or recover faster. And so, and, you know, and actually after that interview with Doc Ollie about those percentages with the peppermint and things like, I actually went home, you know, I went back to my, my home and grabbed a, you know, he, he gave me a bottle of peppermint and I grabbed it and I was just like rubbing it all over my body. <laughs> just like, you know, trying to be able to dunk or something, but, but yeah, I mean, but it's just, it's amazing how these oils have, can just really help the body either heal itself of something or just be able to perform better on a daily basis. And I don't think people can, I don't think people realize the impact on how powerful these oils can be. Yeah, it's really amazing. And then I think it was soon after that, that Dr. Ali went in to have his brain examined, or maybe that's the wrong word, I guess, scanned <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about the oils. Um, and that was a really interesting part. I feel like you probably didn't have enough time in the film to give it justice, but do you want to kind of share with everyone what that part was all about and sort of what your big takeaway was from that part? Sure, sure. Actually, when, when he sent us the footage, I was going to go in and edit out his brain and send it back and saying we didn't find anything. But I didn't think that would be really funny. But he, um, yeah, so he was, he he actually went to a, uh, it was a brain, there's a 3D brain imaging place that, she, that he went to in Las Vegas. And when he was there, so he got hooked up and got his brain on the monitor. And what he was doing was he was inhaling peppermint and then he inhaled lemon and then he inhaled frankincense uh, all at one, uh, you know, like individually and then all at one time. And the effects that the that inhaling the oils had on the brain was amazing. I mean, they were they were looking at the at the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain and positive emotions and negative emotions. And and when he would inhale, you would see parts of his brain just light up super red or it would be or it would go down really calm. And depending on what he was inhaling, and then it would affect some parts of the brain. And so it was really, it was really amazing being able to see how peppermint and lemon can put you in a good mood and how frankincense, if you inhale that like over a certain, certain period of time, or if you do a combination, it can really boost up your creativity. It can give you more focus. It could give you more motivation. 
And so there was been a lot of, uh, and he also discussed some of the research, you know, with, with maybe kids that have attention deficit, deficit disorder and being able to maybe diffuse some of that in their rooms at nighttime and, you know, help their, you know, help their brains calm down a little bit and being able to focus more in school and things like that. So it was, it was pretty amazing. And I don't think no one's, this has been the first time that it's ever been on camera where they've actually recorded it and, you know, been able to show it to the public that, you know, how powerful these oils can be if if you inhale them a certain way and how they affect your brain. Yeah. Well, and I loved when Dr. Stewart sort of really told us exactly why that worked. And I love Dr. Stewart. He's actually been on the show before and he just has a way of explaining the mechanics and the science behind all this that just makes it so interesting and so fascinating. I'd, I'd love to play one more clip from the film just from when Dr. Stewart was discussing the way that essential oils affects the emotional part of our body. Why are oils seemingly becoming more popular in today's time, and I've noticed a great increase in the interest in oils just in the last 15 years that I've been acquainted with them. A couple of reasons for that. People are discovering that the pharmaceuticals are not working. Instead of making them well, they often make you more sick. You know, you end up overcoming this problem and acquiring a side effect, which is maybe worse than your problem. They're beginning to wake up to the fact that Pharmaceuticals and medical practice in general is designed for relieving symptoms, not getting to the root cause of a disease. So you just simply get rid of one set of symptoms and you have another because you really didn't address the problem. And so they find out that essential oils actually address the roots. Most of the diseases that we have have emotional and spiritual roots. They're not physical. And if you treat only the physical side of things and you still retain the emotional unresolved problems, then you may resolve one illness and just get another. We have five senses. Four of those senses process through the cerebrum up here, which is your conscious rational mind. But the nose does not. The nose circumvents this part of the brain, goes under that into an area called the limbic brain. It's the emotional brain, it's not rational. And fragrance goes straight to that part of the brain. But that is the part of the brain that is the librarian and cataloger of all of our unresolved emotions. So if you have a traumatic experience as a child or any time in your life that you don't have the maturity and understanding to process, then that emotion is stored in your body. Those experiences have to be resolved. If we can't resolve them at the time, then the limbic brain says, okay, we're gonna save that for later and it'll put it somewhere in your body. Let's say that puts it in your pancreas. Let's say that's a good place. We can put that particular experience there. 10 years later, you don't even remember it. It'll start malfunctioning as a pancreatic malfunction. Now the medical people are gonna say that's just a physical problem and they will treat the physical idea, but that doesn't deal with the root. And let's say you don't get it and after a little bit of hypoglycemia or some problems in that regard, that's your pancreas trying to tell you there's an issue, it's here. If you will work and call it up and deal with it, it'll go away. But you don't get it, and you're not taught that in normal health classes or books on medicine. I love that. And it's something that no one really talks about, um, and especially not in Western medicine, for sure. And what did you think, you know, what were your first reactions when you heard him talking about this? Well, to be honest, when I was at his house, we were doing the interview. I was in awe of all the information he was telling me because I was I was showing up, you know, mostly because he had written that book, uh, Healing Oils of the Bible. And I kind of wanted to, you know, get some biblical history of the oils, but it was just so much more knowledge that he has, and especially about the emotions in the Bible. And just hearing him talk about how, and it made sense about, you know, when, if you have some kind of trauma as a child and, you know, a a lot of people, the way they deal with trauma is they forget about it and they repress it, but it doesn't really go away. It just goes in certain parts of your body. And, you know, that's, that's just the way emotions work. And so those, you know, so that trauma, that emotional trauma can wind up and stay in your body for years and you can never know that it's there until it manifests itself. And let's say, like the pancreas or the liver or some kind of illness that you have. And to really, instead of, and, and a lot of people mis, misdiagnose that because they want to, you know, try to, you know, either heal the liver or 
do some kind of medication for the pancreas and things like that. But what you got to do is you have to deal with the emotion, like, you know, on, on an emotional level. And then you're, you know, you know, then you're on your way to the body correcting itself. And so his knowledge of that was just amazing. And being able to bring up those past emotions through the use of oils. And then, and if you use them in a certain way and, and, and in a correct way that you can really bring back, you know, some of that trauma back there. And then you're able to deal with it as an adult and then kind of just go, okay, you know, and then move on from there. And then you don't have to worry about it anymore. But it, it, it's amazing how physically the oils can really impact your body, but then also emotionally how it can really, you know, go places where medicine just can't. I mean, like they, they just don't have access to that parts of your, of your body, just like oils oils do. Right, exactly. And and the real world applications for this are so, I mean, they're limitless. But I liked when he was talking about the learning block. How did he say to get past a learning block? Oh, it was getting a drop of cedarwood oil, putting it on, on your right thumb and then pressing your right thumb up against the roof of your mouth. And so he's, he's talking about, you know, I think in the movie he had talked about a lot of people have a block with chemistry, like, you know, because mo most people, whenever they say they can't learn something, it's not really a physical block. It's more of an emotional block. And he says to break through that emotional block of being, you know, not being able to learn something is to just do that. Put ce cedar wood on your thumb and press it up on the roof of your mouth and just leave it there for about five to 10 seconds. And then after that, the oil will somehow bring up that emotion. You're able to deal with it and then you can kind of move on from there. And he says when he taught professor, or when he was when he was a professor and he taught chemistry, he would have to do that every single class when, when it started. And then by the end, you know, ninety nine percent of the kids that had said they would could never learn chemistry were, were passing with flying colors. So, so I mean, right there, I mean, you, you can tell that there's a it works, and he, you know, he's proven that it that it works, and there's a, a track history right there. God, it's so, so fascinating. And I'm sure the skeptics out there listening are going, yeah, right. That is never going <laughs> right. to work. But it's really, it's magical. It's just amazing what these, what these things, what these oils can do for our bodies. And, and we don't even, we've only begun to scratch the surface, I feel like, of actually understanding the chemistry and the science behind what these oils can do. It's really amazing. I totally agree because, you know, I think in America, we're scratching the surface, but you got other countries like China and India who have been using these oils, um, and, you know, for, 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 you know, like, I don't know how many thousands of years. And so they've had thousands of years of research that they've that they've done and that has been proven over and over again through case study through case study and that they have their archives that, you know, that we don't have access to. And so there's, and so in America, we're scratching the surface, but I mean, there's people, you know, millions and I mean, billions of people that have used them over the centuries that have really benefited from oils. And it's, uh, you know, it's really exciting for us America to actually, you know, kind of wake up and we're leaning more towards that right now because we're realizing that, you know, traditional healthcare is just not working anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well put. So part of the film that you sort of go into as well are some of the more controversial topics surrounding essential oils. When you when you first began to make the film, did you kind of have any idea that you would sort of broach on these different controversial topics or were you kind of oblivious to the, the fact that they existed? That's a good word, oblivious. <laughs> it's a very, a very kind word. I, I was not aware of, of uh, you know, some of the opinions that people have in different parts of the oil industry, you know, whether how to use oils and the best way to use them and things like that. And so there's just, there's one world of thinking, uh, like a lot of the aromatherapists are very, you know, they're very uh, careful with the oils, you know, like, which is great. But then you have the other world of, of oils, you know, that, that people just embrace the oils and want to see the potential. And so, and I, and I would talk to some different people and get different way, different opinions. And, and that's why I think when we first started out, we, we did run into a lot of that, like a lot of different opinions, but that's what they were. They were opinions. And we wanted to see actual facts about essential oils. And anytime someone gave us a fact about an oil, we wanted to see either a reference or a case study or something on PubMed that just be able to back up that stuff. And so that's why we were, re we were really careful of who we were talking to and to make sure that anything that they said, you know, they, they were able to back it up with, with facts and stuff. So, yeah. And so, you know, there are some controversial things in, in the film, but I think we've been able to really, whenever, you know, we presented a case, um, you know, like when we were talking about JK, he's one of the 
experts in the film. And he was talking about you can't really be allergic to an essential oil because an essential oil is based in fats and an allergy is a protein. And so whenever someone says they're an allergic to like, you know, like lavender or peppermint, that's not really true. It's just more of their body is just not ready you know, like their body's in a really acidic state and they can't take, you know, certain powerful elements. And so that was one of the things that really caused like a little bit of controversy, but it was really good because it got people talking and it really dove into, you know, how, you know, essential oils are really a benefit to the body to be able to help heal itself. Yeah. Well, the the other big one that comes to mind for me is just the debate that happens constantly in the oil industry and that's internal use. And, and mm. that was something that I think Dr. Ollie did a fantastic job talking about on the film. So I'm really glad that you put that in there. It was interesting at the, at the very end of the film, at, you know, throughout the film, you were, I kind of picked up on this vibe of almost like this revolutionary aspect, which is really what we're all about here. We're the essential oil revolution. So we really embrace that, that sort of viewpoint of we are in charge of our own health. We're not going to let anyone else tell us what to do. We are going right. to take care of ourselves. And, and so I just loved the very last part of your film where you just very simply put up those statistics that say the number number of deaths from illegal drugs in 2014 was 10,000. Number of deaths from pharmacological drugs in 2014 were over 100,000. And number of deaths from essential oils in 2014 was zero. And that I think, I just, I love the fact that you ended it there and that you did talk about those sort of tough topics that people talk about, because it, I think it all just gets blown so much out of proportion. And yes. to me, that last, that last little bit of the film, I just, I was just making like fist bump in the air. I was just like, yes, that's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, and you know, and, and here's the thing it's whenever you talk about 100,000 people die each year from pharmaceuticals that is people using pharmaceuticals correctly like that's not even people right. that are abusing the pharmaceuticals i mean that's people who use them correctly and they're dying every single that year. are told to take them by their doctors exactly yeah. this is ex they're they're following the instructions and they end up dying and so it's like um and then jk um you know he had a really great point about um you know like whenever there's a a, a drug that's introduced to, you know to the american market it usually lasts about 10 years because that's about a 10-year case study and then they realize that this drug is actually doing more harm than good. But then you have these essential oils that have been used over thousands and thousands of years in India and China, and they continue to use them because they continue to work. And so if we could just get past some of these, I don't know, real cautious regulations about using essential oils, I think if we can really deal with those, I mean, we can really bring some, you know, quite a bit of uh, really beneficial things to, to the American people. But again, it always com comes down to the, you know, the almighty dollar and uh, mm -hmm. wanting to sell more pharmaceutical drugs as, as opposed to really helping people. Anyway, yeah. but that's just my opinion. Yeah, you know, and it's it's the the system that we're in has so many confines. The system was not built for essential oils. I'll just say that. So, there you, you know, I think there are people, you know, in the FDA and even doctors even that, that probably would really like to learn more and would like to see people utilizing these all natural methods more, but it's just within the confines of the system that we're working within. It's just really hard for us to find that information and be able to talk about it openly. I mean, even on this podcast, I'm so restricted on just what I can say. And, you know, it just, it makes it really difficult, but I do, I do agree. There's part of it is definitely money. <laughs> I'll have to say that, right. <laughs> but not all of it, I think, but I, well, I just love what you're doing. I love the film. I hope everyone listening goes out and watches it. Um, the best place to go find it is essentialoilsmovie.com. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Essentialoilsmovie.com or essentialoilmovie.com. We, we, we think we got all the domains. That was like, smart. <laughs> <and secret movies. laughs> good, good. Film, all that kind of good stuff. That is so awesome. Well, I want to hear more about the feature film and I have a few more questions for you, but real quick, let's take a minute to thank our sponsors. 
This episode of the Essential Oil Revolution is brought to you by the Young Living Premium Starter Kit. You guys, if you have not tried out the Premium Starter Kit from Young Living, you are missing out. I actually did a whole episode about just the Premium Starter Kit, episode 50, where I told my story and dove more into the kit. So for those of you that haven't tried it out yourself, it really is the Cadillac of all essential oil starter kits. You get 11 of the most popular essential oils oils, plus you get to pick which diffuser that you want to come in your kit. It's an amazing deal and you can learn all about it at revolutionoils.com. It's great because you don't have to think about, you know, which oils you want to try first. It it hooks you up with that diffuser, which is my favorite way to use essential oils for sure. It also comes with amazing resources and references for you to know how to use those exact oils. It also has fun things like Ninja Red samples, little travel bottles. It is truly an amazing kit and it's just beautiful. It comes in this beautiful box. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Most of you have already started with your starter kit because that's how 90% of people get started when they decide to try essential oils from Young Living. So again, that's revolutionoils.com. Check it out there or talk to any of your local distributors that you may know. So Rich, before you go, we like to ask our guests the same questions every time before they leave, just to give our listeners an idea of all the different ways that people stay healthy and different things that people are interested in. So can you just real quickly share with us what your daily health habits look like? My daily health habits. Great question. Well, you know, one of the biggest things when I start my day out is is uh, I always have a big glass of water with lemon and peppermint. And then I also do a high fat kind of coffee. So I do coffee and grass fed butter and coconut oil and a little bit of turmeric. And that really kind of just sets my day, floods my brain with all like the healthy fats and because I'm sitting in front of a computer all day. And so I'm able to just stay focused for long periods of time. So that's kind of the, that's my biggest thing that I do um, throughout um, in the beginning. And then um, throughout the day, I usually do some kind of meditation and I always, you know, use uh, frankincense. I diffuse that and uh, meditate right next to it. And it's just really been able to, you know, uh, you know, after probably a, a good hard morning of working, I can just do that midday and it kind of resets me and I can finish off the day pretty, pretty strong. Mm, I love that. I love the fact that you mentioned turmeric tea as well. I've been recently obsessed with turmeric tea, and oh. putting it in everything. It's so good. It really does. It, it, and what I like about it too, is when I put in my coffee, I don't taste anything, but I know that it's, it's so helpful for your body and the way, uh, you know, and for, for your support system in your brain. Absolutely. And then finally, what's just one thing we should all ditch completely and replace with something healthier today? Oh, well, I'll tell you, I mean, for me, the thing was I, I haphazardly just on a whim stopped eating bread for two weeks and I lost 12 pounds. And I just realized wow. how like ridiculously not good bread can be if you don't do it right. And so I don't mm-hmm. go full paleo anymore. I mean, but I just, but, but I'm real conscious about the bread and I'm real conscious about sugar. And, um, like if it's just not, you know, like, you know, in the fruits or the vegetables that, you know, that I'm eating, I just kind of just stay away from it. And, you know, and I think you can cheat every, you know, every couple of days, which is fine. But when I took out bread and sugar from my consistent lifestyle, I lost weight and I was able to stay focused more. I sleep better. And removing Diet Coke. You know, that was one of the big things. I love Diet Coke because I thought, oh, if if I'm not going to have sugar, I can have Diet Coke and it'll be. But I mean, when I removed that from my diet as well, it was, it's it's amazing how much (laughs) garbage is in those elements that could really mess up your body. And I really noticed them for me when I removed those from my life, it was just like, it was eye opening, and I was able to work longer, stay focused longer edit like into the night and not have to sleep as long. So it was really, really good for me. Great. Well, before we say goodbye, I'd love to know what's the best way for people to connect with you. And also I'd love for to hear a little bit more about the feature film you're working on. It just sounds wonderful. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, anyone can go to the, you know, the website, essentialoilsmovie.com. And then, uh, you know, we have a, there's a phone number in there, or you can just email us directly through the website and it'll all, you know, all go to me or, mother producer. And then, um, yeah, we're working on a romantic comedy about an essential oil distributor 
and that she's trying to build her business. And, you know, she's going through all the quirks of having, you know, different funny characters in her downline. And then she ends up falling in love with a, a local doctor that doesn't believe in oils. And so there's this whole conflict and her trying to convince him to, you know, take a chance and they're falling in love and this and that. And I think there might be like maybe a like the FDA might be like the bad guy in this one, but I don't know. We'll see. We're, we're, we're still working on the script, but we're going <laughs> to have that out. We, we've we always wanted to put our stuff, like whether this film or the future projects, projects that we're going to do, it's just we wanted it to be a resource for people just to be able to use them and to help them build their business and just to get people excited about oils. And so we just want to be, you know, just kind of open up people's eyes about how much oils can really benefit someone's life. That's awesome. I love it. I, I hope it makes it to theaters only for the fact that they'll be the best smelling theaters across the United States. Oh my gosh. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, you know, when we were at convention, I don't know if you were at convention this last, uh, was it a couple of months ago? We were in one of the hotels and every time I got on an elevator, it was just, just this aroma of peppermint and lemon <laughs> and lavender was just everywhere. And it was amazing. I loved it. That's great. I love it. Well, thanks, Rich. It's just been a pleasure getting to chat with you here. I love the film. I hope everyone watches it. Um, thanks so much for coming on. It's been a blast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sam. I appreciate it. It was really great talking. All right, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. You've got to check out this movie. It is so awesome. You can find it at EssentialOilsMovie.com or you can check it out on the show notes for this page. RevolutionOils.com forward slash EO movie is where you can find the notes for this episode. And on the site, you should be able to find all the past show notes for all our past episodes as well. As always, I'll see you next week. Keep on learning. Keep on discovering. Most importantly, though, keep on treating yourself well. You are worth it. <laughs>